have a number of other uh, matters to consider uh, among the commission. Mm -hmm. And might as well take them in order. Uh, as the uh, new chair, and having already stumbled with uh, when the house is supposed to go, uh, I uh, mentioned to Bruce that it would be useful for me to have a standard protocol uh, by which we understood what the correct sequencing of things uh, is. And Bruce uh, raised on the list and emailed it back to me and then he and I met and came up with uh, this proposed uh, standard protocol, uh, which beginning each meeting with some sort of mission statement. Um, ultimately, it would be nice to have that as a, a formal approved document that we all uh, agree on the language for. Um, but as I've been doing the last couple of meetings, just an informal statement at least. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes reference to the Wetlands Protection Act or uh, city ordinance. Uh, then uh, to uh, read each agenda item in full uh, and then this is a proposed sequence for discussion to ask uh, conservation members if there's any conflicts of interest that's one of the things that uh, we haven't done before i read somewhere when i was first coming on to the commission um, about conflict, conflict of interest requirements um, but it occurred to me that that would be something that we haven't addressed since then, um, and probably should, uh, because it's not just monetary interest, it's a perception that there could be a conflict of interest based on where you live or who you know, and issues like that, and, and the uh, individual members might be wise to recruit, recuse themselves. You know, and it, it would be useful to me to have a, a refresher, Bruce, you indicated that there's some required um, training, or, or at least at, some annual refresher that is available? There is, and um, uh, what I understand, I talked to Wayne about it. And for a couple of years, we had it every year, and, and then um, what it does is it gives us a break on our insurance, too. Uh, and this year, they're not looking at uh, conflict of interest and open meeting law. They're looking at some other um, trainings. So Wayne said, I could do a training with the commission if that's how you want to move forward, or we could do it. We could have a subcommittee and do that, or however you want to move forward. But this year, there won't be a citywide. Citywide, one for all commissions. For all commissions, right. Yeah, um, yeah I think it'll be I think I'm, I'm right. imagining it's, you know, 20, 30 minute kind of, that's not a lengthy discussion or, or articulation. If I were to do it, yes. <laughs> the the citywide <laughs> training, yeah, I believe. Yeah. One of the yeah. attorneys from Springfield comes yeah. Well, I'd be happy with the 20, 30 minute version, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we can incorporate that, uh, because one of the other things that uh, we talked about is making space in our agendas at these meetings um, uh, to discuss issues like how we operate, and that would be one of the variables that would be in that category, um, and so we could uh, ask, uh, would, would it be you, Bruce, to present, uh, here's the, the, the rules and requirements for that? Uh, you can ask me or anyone. I mean, if, if you prefer it to come from someone from the outside, from Wayne, or uh, a different department head. And, and our, our office deals mo the most with o uh, open meeting laws and conflict of interest, but yeah, it, wherever you guys would like, I can, or I can ask I could ask the district attorney to come and give a, a 30 minute, 30 minutes is tough for district attorneys, I think. <laughs> right. um, but it's, uh, it's something that I, I, I would like have overt and done periodically. I think as new members come mm -hmm. in, and I'm a relatively, I came in seven, eight months ago. And so it's, uh, this is all stuff that I haven't been through before. And I think it's, wise even if several members have that the whole committee hear the same thing at the same time um, periodically to refresh the standards that we're expected to uh, work with um, so at that point uh, once reading the uh, agenda item uh, uh, 
So I, I'll take that as a, uh, I'm, I'm going to propose a, a series of uh, either training and education related uh, uh, agenda items, things we might spend 15 to 30 minutes on from time to time. Uh, and I'll just include that as one of those um, that I'll, I'll try to be looking at our calendar ahead and proposing when we might do things. Some of us might prepare a little presentation or go to a conference and come back and report on it or any of those kinds of things. Um, I'll, I'll include the conflict of interest in that, uh, in that, um, in that list. Uh, so that, I would ask members if there were any conflict of interest. Um, and then uh, uh, next, to review if the item under consideration was a continuation from a prior meeting, we have to establish who can vote on it. Uh, because it, uh, uh, we have had varying members present from various times. Um, I don't know what the constraints would be if we run out of a, uh, a quorum. If, if people miss. Uh, we don't need to call the open meeting. Well, you only need a quorum to open the meeting, but uh, if you have a continuance, yeah. if you miss that first meeting, mm -hmm. you can't vote at the second meeting. Right. And there's something on the, uh, the state has allowed something called the, the Mullen Rule, which, uh, if passed in your individual community, allows a, a member who misses a meeting mm -hmm. To, re still vote. to review the, the records right. and then still vote. But, that but the records have, it has been passed in Northampton, but only for city council at this point. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the reason that it works for city council is city council is televised. And right. so you can watch it. So you can watch it. So okay. we. are not always televised. <laughs> and, um, so, uh, so right now, if you miss a meeting in the Conservation Commission, you can't vote on a continuance during the next meeting unless you were at the first the initial meeting. You can't have an audio recording too. Uh, it could be audio or it could be a verbatim transcription. Can't vote on the project. But we don't have any of those. I mean, so. Um, yeah, you can't, I understand that you can't vote on the project, but how is that, why is that throwing quorum off? I don't understand that. The quorum is the meeting, but. Because uh, if majority. it. Yeah, if it gets continued and say, do you need a quorum to vote? Do you need a quorum to vote? Do you need a quorum to vote? No, you need a quorum. You need a quorum to vote on a continued project. On a continued project? Well, it, it could turn out that you only have two voting members mm -hmm. on a project right. out of a seven member commission. It's continued on for right. a long time. The case was originally a zoning uh, board of appeals and the, the chapter 40 specifically sets out the number of members who have to vote. And um, they then said, you, know, you, need not, you need not just to have those number of members be present, but they have to actually be able to vote on the matter. So exactly, exactly you know, people were knocked out because they missed evidence. And the Zoning Board of Appeals ended up having only four people to vote, and that was not you know, that was not the number required in the statute. And then there was a lower court case. I don't know if Bruce would ever went up any higher, but there was a, a trial court case that extended that to conservation commissions. So, and that Mullen rule has then been extended. So, ultimately, you could run out of members who could vote and you'd have to present it all Start over. over. Yeah. So, so the MACC, um, the president, made an argument that if you were, if you were, Making a decision under the Wetlands Protection Act, the State Wetlands Protection Act, you might not need to adhere to the mom rule because, or it's likely you wouldn't, because you're not making a final determination. It's immediately appealable to DEP. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you are, if you're making it under the city ordinance where you can only, you know, where there's a procedural hurdle going to the right. court, then you would have to have the four commissioners having heard all the evidence. So the, in that case, for our practical purposes, it would be, if, it, if it, in the case of a denial, if the basis of the denial were um, not the city ordinance, yeah. but the Wellness Protection Act, then the person... They can appeal. They can appeal, they can take it to the DEP immediately. That's, mm -hmm. So that, that at least is a theory. It's never gone to an appellate court review, so... Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's probably 
best practice to have a majority, yeah, a majority receiving with that. Do we have a, 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 a stated number? Does, it, does a majority, a literal majority, to, to uh, pass a motion um, on, on a case? Do we have a defined number? Well, does it happen? Well, well that's why. No. No. Because we could have a, a, a meeting with you can have a less meeting. than a full complement at the meeting. And can you know, can three people ever approve a motion? If there if, if, if there's five people at the meeting, you would have right. a quorum, you'd have an operating committee, but you've only you would have not a yes. majority. Yes, uh, and I'll I'll check into it, but I believe the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. It's the majority at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, that and a majority of the, the quorum at the meeting. So a quorum that doesn't always mean you have to have four right. votes. Uh, it means right. the majority at the meeting constitutes a quorum. That's the way I understand. That's the way I've always understood it, and, and I will check into it. But I'm almost positive. So that then we then we're dealing with three required because right. you would have to have uh, one more than half. Uh, right. Unless it's otherwise noted in. in on certain committees, like city council, there is a required six-person vote, or a required whatever that is. Mm -hmm. The planning board. The planning board special, has uh, permit for special permit, 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 same thing. Right. And I think zoning and board of appeals has the same. But mm -hmm. for conservation commission, no. If you have enough people, then a majority of a majority of the of the core vote of uh, the who can vote, which right. is then vote. then you know if you don't have. Um, at least three people who can vote on a case, you can't hear the case. Even though you may have a quorum at the meeting, but if they haven't been to prior right. hearings. But if you were to continue it, then there would be any discussions. So right. Nothing, right, we did that in one case. That's great. Um, okay. No, I'm not clear on that. If you were to continue it, then there were five people here at the original hearing. And you can I'm on there, there's seven of us. Yeah. And you continue it and only three show up to the next hearing, but we have a form to open. Those three can vote then? No. no. It has to be the five. You have to have it has to be four. Four. Right, four because that's actually the majority. Because that's the majority of the overall board. It has yeah. to be four on continuum. But you could open a a hearing and say we are not going to discuss the hearing, we're going to continue it to a date, time, and place of certain. And with then, less with than less than, uh, you could do that with just four just people, four, a quorum yeah. of the yeah. seven person board. Person and because there's no discussion, there's nothing that was right. missed. So. Right. Nobody's missed it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and that's what's happened to me at other commission meetings where they didn't have enough members there that were mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. hearing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. So in uh, this is well, when Bruce and I sat and talked to, about having the standard protocol. It was already useful to me to realize that um, there's a lot of kind of background issues like this about what, how, and whether we're prepared uh, to hear and act on uh, the material that comes before us um, in terms of conflict of interest and who's been in prior hearings and, and so forth. Uh, then the next step would be uh, if there has been a uh, site visit uh, to uh, state when that happened uh, into the record um, and then allow the applicant to present and walk us through uh, uh, their petition. Um, if it's a, a notice, notice of intent, then to ask uh, Bruce about what the DEP comment. Sometimes we have written letters that uh, are distributed by that time. Right. Just so everybody knows, if it's a buffer zone project, DEP doesn't doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Buffer zone only. I beg to differ. You beg to differ? Yeah. Mr. Stinson has commented more than once on mm -hmm. RDAs. Uh, okay. Um, commissions if they're let me restate that. If it's a buffer zone project in Northampton, <laughs> DEP does not comment. 
they, they said they will not waste their time on buffer zone projects. They don't feel that uh, there are performance standards for a buffer zone that so there's nothing really to comment on it. it it's left up to the conserva local conservation commission. There are performance standards. Well, I, I'm just repeating what DEP has stated. Do they take today. that position because and our ordinance is more rigorous? Say again. Do they take that position because the ordinance is more rigorous than? I'm not sure why they take that position. Um, that's just what has been conveyed to me from DUP is that on a buffer zone project they, they do not comment. Mm -hmm. And we haven't received comments. Do you want to have more people come in? I don't think so. In fact, it was long. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, if I, please unlock, unlock it just in case. Thanks. So, anyway, I don't know what DEP's, <laughs> why they take that stance, but um, uh, for the past two years, mm -hmm. we haven't received a comment on a buffer zone project. Right, okay. No matter what, if DEP gives us comments, we'll read it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I just want to say, you know, that if when I say mm -hmm. it's a buffer zone project, there are no DEP mm -hmm. comments, that's just that's standard. And Normally they're not, but sometimes, depending on the complexity of the RPA. Mm -hmm. Um. And to allow the, the applicant to uh, address those comments. Then to ask Bruce uh, uh, any questions for the applicant. And ask the commission members if they have any questions for the applicant. Then ask the public uh, whether they have any comments or questions um, for the applicant. Reminding them that this uh, is to be related to Wetlands Protection Act or the interests thereof or the city ordinance. Um, not to, you know, what the neighborhood was like when they were growing up. I, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of those kinds of comments that have come in meetings that have been at that we can't do anything about it, and it, you know, it doesn't provide us with information on which to act. Um, uh, then, um, after that, to, uh, to close the hearing. Uh, now, I get, let me ask a, a question that procedurally if um, thinking of the, the comment earlier Sue when I uh, asked for a motion to close the hearing you said well th then we've got a thumbs up thumbs down uh, question before us uh, we could decide instead to continue at that point um, and so what's a what's a right protocol step to decide which of those avenues uh, to go just for me to put it on the table yeah, normally yes. Usually they have to go. If they want to continue. Unless it's our issue. Unless it's something we definitely decide we want to continue for. Yeah, either, either party. So you know, Kevin, if you close the hearing, uh, you can continue the hearing to a time, date, and place. And then when you that hearing comes in front of the commission again, you could always continue it again and continue it again until you finally get everything you want. But if you close the hearing, you could the com commission doesn't have to make a decision for 21 days. Mm -hmm. So you could make the decision at the next mm -hmm. meeting, but you can't take any more uh, any, so just anything else for the record. So just which phase of the from discussion? The public or from if, the if the discussion's part. complete, we can close it. If there's more information to be forthcoming, or we yeah. think there might be, or, we want or, the, get or the applicant wants there to be, mm -hmm. in all right. those cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't hurt to continue it. Sometimes they're peeing yeah. because they want to do something. But well, I'm, no, my, my concern was more prosaic. How do we know when we're ready to act as opposed to <laughs> wait? Right. If someone makes a motion, which either can be rejected or accepted, to continue. Or to go to close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone makes that motion. Yeah, John. Yeah. If you could step back yeah, one. Well, John was yeah. about two seconds well, after the after presentation. Yes, mm -hmm. questions or comments. Yeah, um, motion to close, motion to close. Once in a while, you get a project like, to, you know, oh, that was funny. Mm -hmm. where you got a very large turnout. And yeah. it's usually prudent to limit um, comments to uh, X. X number of minutes and to take new comments, not just have people get up and say mm -hmm. something else mm -hmm. to 
and you might want to make, you know, yeah, the if you see a large group, you know, might make that announcement uh -huh. that, um, Good. you know, uh, how many people are here for this project, <coughs> because there's 35 people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, three minutes. You know, yes, get to three minutes, and right. and please only new comments. That, that yep, gotcha. Mm -hmm. We did that at the last meeting. We did that to to yes. to, to some <coughs> well, where we're getting this protocol down. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to throw that in. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, then after the determination of whether to continue or to decide the case. If decide then close the hearing. Um, usually, most of the discussion, in my experience, is, has has taken place. Um, there'll then be uh, a, though a separate discussion that's not un unless we, at my understanding, unless we then direct questions to the applicant. The discussion is among commission members. Is that fair to say? So that when we're trying to decide, okay, which. Um, which issue do we regard as important? Which uh, uh, conditions might we want to include? Uh, what principles are we trying to apply? That's the time when we can have that discussion for ourselves. When we're not we're not at that point any longer taking input from the floor, whether the applicant or the public, unless we ask for it. Can I ask a question as to whether it's appropriate <coughs> to take um, or, or direct questions to the applicant after the closing of the meeting? Because at that point, it's closed, it's closed and, and you would be providing the applicant with a privilege that all the rest of yeah. the people commenting don't uh -huh. necessarily okay. have. Well, in the past, the only time that we usually ask the question to the applicant after it's closed is for a clarification. It's something that we uh -huh. wasn't quite clear um, what he meant, which actually should have been asked during the mm -hmm. say, but I, yeah. I, I guess I could see you might have to do that, but I would think you would avoid yeah. it as much as possible. Right, but every once in a while, if there's, if something does come up right. where it was, oh, gee, we forgot mm -hmm. to, yeah, yeah. No. Right. So it's, it's the, the regarding rule would be that it's during the hearing when it's really an open discussion. Um, the, uh, the, the closed part of the meeting is just when we're um, de deciding what we're going to do with the information that we've gathered, not to gather additional information. You can. Why are we being filmed? <laughs> being filmed at request of a neighbor of ours who couldn't make it. So. Oh, yeah. I assume I'd like to go back out. I'd like to watch myself. <laughs> Yeah, Donnie, you excuse the difference in material. <laughs> That's right. Donnie has a 67-inch screen in his house. Like <laughs> <laughs> his wife comes home and watches yeah. his meetings. <laughs> I can't afford to rent videos. <laughs> Is that why I, you uh, I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a piece regarding a project that we had on tonight? No. 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 Um, it's helpful. If you say something notable, then it will be tagged with, then you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can go right to your part. <laughs> you can go right to your minute mark and watch your it's only put on the web. Oh, yeah, they're, they're all posted. Mm -hmm. So it's just that only. Um, to to uh, finish the protocol, um, yeah. that uh, uh, what I had is that at, at, when we're wrapping up, before making a motion, we ask uh, one last time if Bruce has any additional comments. So we, uh, I think usually it happens informally, but just to formally make sure that the commission and the, uh, the staff, Bruce, mm -hmm. are on the same channel. Um, and then entertain a uh, motion uh, and approve a uh, a motion of some kind at that point, whether it's to approve, deny, or uh, whatever. And that, and Alita, this is the uh, question where we may need your help to, at that point, once the motion's been uh, approved, to reread it in its entirety um, out loud so that the applicant knows uh, what, in fact, the decision has been in the language that we're actually capturing. 
I think most of the time they probably get the sense of, of things, but um, just for thoroughness sake. Uh, now, if you guys think that's unnecessary, I'm okay with that, but it just seemed like uh, I'd feel better if, it, if the dots were connected. Yeah, it helps me because sometimes the conversation goes off to different areas mm -hmm. and then it kind of gets lost on the um, Then, uh, to let the, uh, um, yeah, and Bruce, this is, this is one that uh, you had added. Then, uh, to let the, uh, um, yeah, and Bruce, this is, this is one that uh, you had added about. Uh, 21 days, I'm uh, sorry, and the appeal period is uh, 14 days? That's it really, 10 business days. It really is 10 business days, which generally is 14 days. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. um, and it doesn't actually say 10 business days. Yeah, yeah. Because it, uh, the, so that whatever permitting is necessary, we we'll tell them that. What, what is the number of days for by which after we approve something, we've got to actually issue? It, we have to issue a, a uh, decision within 21 days. And then after that decision is issued, when it gets sent to DEP. Now, presumably, we've made the decision here, right? We're usually. No, no, but you have to notify. You have to actually, it has to be a. Right, no, I understand. So, but it's not that we will make the decision, we will officially communicate the decision. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I understand what the. Oh. Because we have. We have approved the motion here. Right. That is the decision. At that point, you've made a decision as a, as a conservation commission, and then you put the responsibility on me to issue a a, a permit. Right. And when that permit gets sent to DEP, from what I understand, when they receive it, the appeal period starts that day. Uh -huh. Okay. And there's a ten business day appeal period. So that goes to the applicant and to DEP? That's correct. Okay. You see it at the same time. So. So, that and then to say next case. So what, what, what do you think? I think it's fine, except we were saying next case. I think we need to have a firm statement that says that the um, their hearing is over, but we're not done with business, and they need to move right. quietly, yeah. Yeah. quietly, yeah. especially in those instances outside, and if they intend for the discussion to go down into the downstairs. Right. Uh, there's a bit of legal housekeeping. Um, hey, any word does it? No, I. It's absolutely appropriate. I know. It's, they, they can't interrupt our. They can stay, but they have to, they have to stay. Quiet. As they can as stay and listen quietly. Yeah. Should we reference which ordinance or law we are making our decision under because it actually has real effect in terms of where the appeal is taken and what type of appeal is taken? Right. I mean, if we if we decide something under our wetlands protection ordinance, then DP does not want to play a role. They they can't they don't tell us what our ordinance says and then appeal it to the court. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if, yeah. If we were if we were to deny yeah. if yeah. we were to deny yeah. someone, um, okay. if you if you say it's exclusively under the Wetlands mm -hmm. Protection Act, then mm -hmm. it goes well. Then we go to DP. No, under the state. Under the state. Yeah. Um, it could be you know it could be under both. Um, so so to communicate whether the basis of our action was one or the other or both. Right, and it's one of the first things that courts do when they look when. Conservation Commission decisions are challenged is they look at where was the basis, mm -hmm. under what statutory authority. And I think that it would be helpful for us in terms yeah. of grounding our thinking um, to be able to point to the right. authority we're relying on. Um, the appeal period under the home rule is what? 60, 60 days. 60 days? So that's something that we'd like to change in our potentially change in our wetlands ordinance updates is the if you state a an appeal period on your wetlands ordinance your local ordinance you can state it to be the same as the wetlands protection act or whatever you want i guess um, i guess i'm guessing as long as it's not less than the wetlands protection act but i'm not even sure about that 
But if you don't state it, it falls under the Home Rule Act, yeah, 60 days. and the Home Rule Act appeal period is 60 days. So all of the projects that we've issued for the past, since 1989, have had a 60-day appeal period, and uh, we actually don't put that into our wetlands ordinance, um, but that's what it is. Well, that's it. Next item on the agenda is if we can put a, a committee together to make recommendations about now that the ordinance has been in place for a while and we've had some experience of where does there need to be language that's cleaned up or clarified or uh, apparent conflicts resolved and those kinds of things. So that would be one of those I uh, think we could decide to include in the recommendation. Um, now the other standard items that I was imagining was our usual other business, which you know, are there enforcement orders to be signed or other issues, Bruce alluding us to potential acquisitions of property and, and uh, so forth. Um, a chair's report, um, which may not be uh, in most weeks, um, something's going to happen at all, but. Uh, uh, there could be times when, uh, especially as we get to uh, including uh, things like some uh, training or uh, just an opportunity to alert the commission as a whole to uh, stuff that might get uh, built into agendas in coming weeks and so forth. Um, and then a staff report, um, which uh, again, in some weeks may be not much, but it would be good to have on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, our other education and policy discussions, uh, those kinds of issues where uh, we might have anything from people coming back from a, a conference and uh, talking about what um, other conservation commissions are doing or what they learned there, or we're just talking about uh, getting refreshed in our understanding of conflict of interest law or any number of things. Um, and what I would try to do in concert with Bruce is build those things in and, and, and share to some extent, ask especially those of you who are professionally trained in this area to um, uh, help uh, uh, with uh, articulating some of the provisions of the Wellness Protection Act or uh, of our ordinance or whatever. Um, but only do that in days when we don't have a jam-packed, it's going to go to 9 o'clock anyway kind of agenda. So mm -hmm. to try to take into account and have this be somewhat flexible mm -hmm. so that on a day like this, we got time, we can do it. Um, mm -hmm. A day like two weeks ago, we didn't get it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts, comments? If yep. Make sense? Mm -hmm. um, somewhere you're going to put executive sessions in there. Uh, and the protocol for going mm -hmm. into the um, session to state the purpose as the roll call vote. Uh, also, we need it has to be roll call vote to go in? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to come back out. And the public has to leave the room. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I was wondering if we could practice that right now. There's something I'd like to talk about in the session. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and, and there are actually two things that I'd like to talk about. One is a, a personnel issue, and then the other is a an actual um, land acquisition issue. So, uh, um, want to do that or now? Sometime tonight. Oh yeah. Know. Well, how about let's cover. Oh, well, we have a couple of other items here um, that are on the uh, published agenda. Uh, why don't we do those first? Okay. Uh, so move to the next one, uh, which is uh, forming a, um, um, a committee, a subcommittee, uh, to make recommendations to uh, city council about modifications to, uh, uh, clarifications to the uh, uh, city ordinance. Um, that the, the need for this uh, first came up for me about two months ago, I bumped into, well, this seemed to be rational and the basis on which I was arguing we should uh, approve and allow uh, uh, this uh, addition and looking at the language in one part of the ordinance. And then it seemed clear from further discussion in subsequent weeks that there was other language in the ordinance that trumped the language I had been looking at. And, and it seems like we, we gotta 
get the city council to clear up some of those things um, uh, if we can. Um, and they have no basis to know that they're problematic unless we tell them. So um, uh, it, it, Bruce and I have talked, and um, I don't know, Bruce, so that there's a, a season that is preferable to bring this kind of thing before the, the city council. <laughs> <laughs> Are they what, did you, <laughs> what did you just say? A season. A season. Is there a right time of year <laughs> to, to bring uh, proposed modifications? Is there a right <laughs> 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 oh, it's true that city council meets fewer times in the summer and also in, in uh, during the holiday season during November, December. So uh, <laughs> what we did find is in the past that if we bring something in to city council in October and it gets continued to November, then we wait a month in November to the next meeting and then a month in December to the meetings in January. It's often difficult to to keep their attention and keep people actively involved. So here we are in February. It would probably be good on that basis to say let's get something in the hands by April first or like that, so that we're not. Pushing into summer, where the meetings are also in. I think so. Okay. Um, so then, uh, I think Bruce has to be uh, part of that uh, uh, discussion. But do we, are there people who would like to be um, volunteer for uh, yeah. that subject? I've already meeting? volunteered, so. Okay. You've already volunteered. I'm, yeah, I'm ready to. Well, for, well that's. I have lots of time now. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I've been hounding Bruce since I got on the <laughs> Yes. Uh, very good. I'm working on my law. Anybody else on the Downey and Mason? <laughs> Stay up um, anybody else want to be part of that uh, subcommittee? Who would, which is, uh, I'm not assuming that the subcommittee has to. Uh, be the only people thinking about this or doing all the work about this. I mean, all of us have thoughts and issues. There's just got to be somebody to collect it and capture it, and, um, come back and say, here's what we're uh, wanting to propose uh, to City Council, and then we can uh, dig into it as a group. Does that make sense? Or is that, so the charter of the subcommittee is not to do the whole thing, but uh, oh, no. to start a process and bring some recommendations here, and then we'll dig into it and refine it. And, uh, before it goes to city council. Well, these are supposed to be content neutral changes, which, right, I mean, they're supposed to be merely clarifications of the existing law. Right. I mean, I think that if any, that, that to substantively change the yes. rules. Yes, yes. I, th I think, um, 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 although, the, the, well, that would be one of the, can, I don't want to preempt the discussion. Though, we can suggest um, those, but. That, you know, are there cases where we appear based on that table in the ordinance right. to have no uh, judgment to exercise? Right. And do we want that there should be some judgment to exercise? So that, that, that might be the one substantive there. Well, I would, I would try to keep those, I mean, I know the MACC newsletter had a, had a, an article actually on catch-all, sort of on, uh, Safety valve provisions like the one you're talking about, where you know, give give the in the face of an otherwise inflexible provision uh, that, that prohibits an activity to allow some discretion. Um, but I think that we need to keep that separate from the clarifications, yes. the housekeeping, because if they go up together, then they'll yeah, get right. confused. Yeah. One, yeah. So, the battle yeah. for the one will mm -hmm. prevent so, the adoption of the other. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so, a good, good point. Okay. We still probably need. Public. Some public. Oh, those, yeah, because those, those are public meetings. Public, the public will, I mean, I'm no, I know, but I mean, just some stated, you know, meetings for the state. This is what's going to be discussed. Yeah. Sure well, so those. You could put it on the agenda and yeah. have the subcommittee report yeah, on all the. Well, but, the, but the, 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 I think what. More than that. Right. The, the subcommittee the meetings themselves are open meetings. Right. Right. That's true. That's true. What, what I was envisioning is a, a, uh, a few subcommittee meetings and uh, the uh, drafting of some sort of language to bring back to the commission. And then to have the commission review, at, at all this at public meetings, but have the commission review and give their input. And then later to open it up for public review and input. And then to have it come back to the commission again 
for final review and input. Um, maybe that would require more than one public meeting and more than one subcommittee meeting and most likely more than one commission meeting. But uh, well, the subcommittee meetings don't have to be public. There's only three of us. If it's not a, right. it's not a quorum. Uh, it's not a quorum. It doesn't have to be public. But in the past, well, we, we have, we've kept to keep it open and transparent. We have uh, posted them as open public meetings. Mm -hmm and then said, well, this is really an open no working meeting. Right. There's really no public comment until we get okay. some sort of, but they're allowed to attend. Table five in the brewery? Yeah. yeah, it can be anywhere <laughs> that is public, actually. Well, sure, it could, be, it could be there, it could be, right? Not sure how, if it ever has, but. Can we do it in a hotel in Hawaii? As long as it's open to the public. <laughs> Um, all right, well, how, how about then we ask the, the, uh, the committee be self, the subcommittee be self-governing that way, that we not here outline a charter any more specific than we have, or a procedure any more specifically than we have, but that uh, the two commission members plus uh, uh, Bruce are going to meet and get back to this committee with some recommendations. What I would add is that the rest of the committee uh, commission uh, forward to uh, you guys some of the stuff that we've already stumbled over. Mm -hmm. Actually forward it to Bruce so there's only one source. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you won't run into email problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh, I didn't see you had your hand up, sir. It's very small. <laughs> Whoa. So I just wanted some clarification because I couldn't hear. Is it Mason who's on the committee at mm -hmm. this point? Yes. Downey. Mason and Downey. Downey. And Bruce is staff. Who? Downey. Downey, Downey Meyer. Yeah. And who else? Well, Bruce is serving as staff. Person. Oh, and, st and, and, and this staff person. So mm -hmm. that's two, two, uh, commissioners. two commissioners. Two commissioners. Mm -hmm. One old fart, one new guy, <laughs> and a staff member. What's that? One old fart, one new guy, and one and a staff member. Good. <laughs> That's a good time to um, And uh, I know Bruce wanted to have uh, the conference for improving water quality and habitat values. Is that an MACC? Uh, no, that is, uh, give me a moment, I'll pull it up. Yeah, the Manomet, is that, I'm not sure that's how you pronounce Man it. Manomet Conference Center. Oh, oh, in uh, Plymouth. In Plymouth. Right. And it's a free conference on vernal pools, and it's, give me a second, it's coming up. Um, uh, it says uh, the Manomet Co Center for Conservation Sciences is hosting a free conference for individuals and organizations concerned about vernal pools. The Conference for Improving Water Quality and Habitat Values in Vernal Pools will be held on March 14th from 8.30 to 3 at Stonehill College in Easton. That's what it is, Easton. Um, this event is the culmination of a three-year project to evaluate and protect water quality in vernal pools. Throughout the project, Manomet has engaged partnering organizations, including Natural Heritage, Native Species Program, Vernal Pool Association, Charles River Watershed Association, Ton River Watershed Alliance, to develop science-based solutions that improve water and habitat. <coughs> Uh, it's free. I have the phone number here. If any, I can forward this to the commission. In fact, I'll do it right now. Are you going to uh, go to that? I don't know if I'll have time to go to this. Um, but we could all go down together. And I'm forwarding, forwarding that right now as we speak. Okay. So, and uh, I'm sorry. Chris, I, I don't know if I put you on the conservation okay. um, member uh, email yet, but I will, uh, and I'll send that to you. And then the second um, conference is the Mass Association of Conservation Commission, their annual environmental conference in, at Holy Cross College in Worcester. And that's February 28th, I believe. Let me bring that up. That's February 28th. It's a Saturday. It's all day. Um, 
Normally the city would pay for your attendance, but this year we cannot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and they can't pay for mine either. So, <laughs> paying for myself if I go, which means I should have submitted a paper went for free. And I've been to well, only two of the more elementary of these workshops, but they actually seem pretty good. They're yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the conference is great, um, and you'll, you'll meet a lot of people with a lot of knowledge. DEP will be there, and there'll be uh, uh, numerous companies and organizations who do wetlands and conservation work, engineering work. Um, yeah, it's a good conference, yeah. and the, most of the information sessions are helpful. Mm -hmm. Problem is, you can't fit in everything you want. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, well now I'll entertain a motion to uh, go to executive session. For, uh, for personnel reason and uh, land acquisition. Motion to go to executive session for personnel reason and land acquisition. 